Well, I'm joined today by Pastor Manrique Salazar. Dr. Salazar is the lead pastor of Emmanuel Bible Church. Of course, we know um, that he has been with us for, it's been five months, Pastor? Four months? Five months? It seems like much quicker. Five months, yes. And what was that like to get a call? Now, you're in Costa Rica at the time of the call. You, your dear wife, our sister Rebecca, and the children, uh, in your church you had planted, Familia de Fe, and you were at the ministry. You thought, well, this is this is where I'm going to grow old. And, uh, and, and then you get a call from our um, then interim pastor, uh, dear uh, Dr. Dan Green, calls you and uh, walk us through what that was like in your, in your heart when you uh, got that call. Well, I'll, I'll re I remember that. Uh, I think it was Rebecca, my wife, Rebecca, that she received uh, the first call. And, and uh, so Dr. Green somehow explained to her the, his intention behind the call and I was not at home. So when I came, she already she already told me a little. And, and so that, I guess, it prepared me a little. I saw how she was in complete shock. And, uh, <laughs> and, and so I called Dr. Green and then he explained to me in, in, in few moments of his intent or, or purpose, uh, the purpose of the call. And uh, well, I th I'll, if I need to choose a word after he hearing him ex explaining to me, um, the he wanted to formally invite me to consider uh, a pastoral position in the United States. I, I was shocked. Uh, I was like, <laughs> just just shocked and and asking myself, this is real. <laughs> like, okay. So um, immediately after he explained to me, he gave me com complete freedom, you know, to to express at all times. Um, my, if I had any any clarity, if I, if I wanted to continue with other meetings and and you know the the first reaction was coming to the Lord and pray with Rebecca, kneel and ask uh, ask for wisdom. And um, I if there was something that I had clarity at that moment was seek wisdom, uh, practice the steps of wisdom, which mm -hmm. means to pray, um, to pray, to ask advice to maybe a couple of persons that were, they were very important for us, both Rebecca and, I, and me. And, and so that's what I started doing. Uh, I didn't, I didn't reject it uh immediately but went to the lord and seek for wisdom seek wisdom and from him and and slowly the process went uh, little by little moving uh forward uh until the day that we both rebecca and me we concluded i think this is god's will and it took it took around six months to seven months to be able at the end at the end of those months to be able to say yes this is God's will. Amazing. And, you know, there were just uh, many barriers, I, I think, uh, that that were that had to be overcome supernaturally. And um, not only the the sheer logistics of moving your entire family uh, from uh, you were in San Jose. Is that correct? You guys were living in in the main city, the capital city. Exactly. San Jose, the capital at the north north area that is uh, the coldest area, a, a town, a little a mountainous a town called Coronado. That's where we were. Oh, man. So, it sounds lovely <laughs> to say. And uh, and then to to just the logistics of getting all of your well, most of your possessions and then and then you have to ship them up here literally on a on a boat. Right. They had to go into Miami and then. Uh, was that the way that it went? Uh, how, how exactly you got most of your stuff up here anyway? Exactly. We we knew that um, we needed uh, to, uh, with the church, we needed to, both together, we needed to face uh, the costs of transporting something to the U.S. So we decided, no, let's, let's sell everything. <laughs> let's just select. Uh, we asked wow. advice in this process. There were several precious people missionaries, 
other pastors that knew how to do this. And so they advised us, you know, keep your books, <laughs> keep your books, keep your clothes, get rid of all the clothes that, that are not necessary. Um, you need to adapt to, to Chicago. So uh, uh, keep the toys, those things that your kids wants to keep, keep them. Uh, keep those things from the home that are very precious because they were a gift of their family related or in, uh, inherited by Rebecca and the rest sell it or give it away. So wow. that was the rule. That's amazing. That's amazing. Well, I, I remember um, we were, we were as a church uh, considering and praying. I happened to have been on the committee and, and there was a, quite a few of us and, we were praying about it, and uh, I think our sentiment was, for the most part, uh, yeah, there's a lot of a lot of barriers, but if the Lord is going to make this happen, He's just going to fling all of the doors open, and and uh, that is exactly what He did. I, I would say um, uh, He He really supernaturally um, brought your dear family up to Chicago to um, be with us in Berwyn at Emmanuel Bible Church. Pastor, what uh, what would you say was your first? Um, I know you had been to Chicago before. You did a, a candidate visit. We spent some time together as you both were your family. You and Rebecca and the children were considering the move. As you were waiting for the Lord's uh, move, move also his uh, his word to you. What would what would you say uh, after all that decision was made? You folks moved up. And you were here the first week or two. Uh, what was your impression of of our church, Emmanuel, the people? Uh, what was that like in your heart, and and how were you feeling uh, those first couple of weeks? Well, I'll have to to say that are well, there's several aspects, but if I need to choose two, uh, first was the the I mean the the relational part. Um, getting to know people and being received and welcomed by the congregation, both in the English and Spanish service services, knowing that uh, these people are coming from different backgrounds, from different, uh, even um, different uh, ethnicities or, or nationalities. And, uh, and I mean, you could feel this war warm reception understanding appreciation love uh, and to be honest that was that was something something quite necessary for me uh, my wife and and our kids uh, and it looked like it was type of the characteristic or mark of the congregation and that was that was precious because it feels like family even if we don't know that much one another but uh, we were very warmly received um, and since Today, we have feel uh, very encouraged and loved. The second aspect that since day one, but once I was, uh, since before coming in, um, the history of the church, the mm. history of the church, uh, I knew it, about it from Dr. Green, from my conversations with you, with uh, Steve, but, and many other people. But once I, I was here, uh, in the next weeks, I start like receiving people in my office. They will come and say, hey, I just wanted to say, pass by and say hi. Even persons that did, didn't belong to the church no more, but they were, they grew up in the church and they were in by the church. And so I could, I could have a view of, of the last, by those, inter, those meetings with those persons, I, I start getting to know the history of the church through the experience of those persons. Uh, persons mm. that came through Owana when they were kids, they they got saved in the church. They became believers in here. They got married in the church. Their children got married in the church. I mean, the history uh, of the church mm -hmm. impacting generations after generations, that has been something precious, valuable uh, mm -hmm. for me. Well, we have, and we're celebrating this year in, in August, our 125th anniversary as a church. And um, one of the aspects or, or dynamics of being a part of a church with a long history like that, my wife, Kathy, and my family and I, we're, we're like newcomers still. We've only been at Emmanuel for 21 years, you know, 
So <laughs> we're like, we feel like newcomers <laughs> to the, to the, to the church, even though we've been there uh, quite a long time. So that's, that presents a challenge uh, in and of itself. Would you say that, um, that there were any, um, any things that, uh, that you saw in the community that, um, that you saw opportunities uh, to um, uh, obviously carry out your calling. Your calling is to is to preach and to teach and to uh, counsel. Um, would you say you, you saw opportunities almost immediately? I would think, wouldn't you? Yes, I will say that um, because of that relational part, uh, I saw a, b a beautiful opportunity to start shepherding people. Uh, getting to know people, getting allow them to get to know me, and 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 also, um, I mean, I I have a a, a deep, a, a clear call. Um, I can recognize that call to shepherd people, um, and even I see teaching or preaching, my teaching or preaching, like a way of shepherding people and leading them and and encouraging them from the pulpit, but also in that way that I can relate to them get to know them you know uh the the, the human the manrique the person you know uh and um and the family as well my family and and so i i think it was it was i saw the opportunity to shepherd since the beginning uh because of the also the attitude of the persons i could see that they will be open to be shepherd or to be uh, a, a, to, to start these relationships, one-to-one -one relationships with them. And mm -hmm. so uh, that's what I've been doing since, since month one and, and people have been open to do that. And, and so I think that that mainly is the, the first opportunity of service that I sought to shepherd, to start getting to know people, to allow them to know my, me and my family, and also to, from the pulpit, to shepherd mm -hmm. them, encourage them, teach them, inform them, Absolutely. And, um, you know, would you say that you were mindful of, of um, entering, for example, uh, this church and being careful not to bring so many changes that, that, uh, that would um, discombobulate the people? Or uh, I, walk us through a little bit of that thought process that you go through when you think about changes and as you've, you've come on board these last five months now. Yes, um, that's a, um, a great subject. Um, I, I do believe that when we come into an already established church um, and the church has already established its, its culture, the church culture is established already. It's marks, it's traditions, uh, the, uh, the way of implementing things. Um, I know uh, for sure that a wisdom will not be coming with the intention of changing immediately everything. Uh, that's something learned in, in my, during my training process and, and also by experience, you know, divisions, conflicts come when the new person comes and just wants to change absolutely everything. And so I think by God's grace, I have that already in mind very clearly. So when I study Emmanuel Bible Church and make my questions in the interviews, uh, that's what I need to know if if uh, if what the way Emmanuel did things, it was something I will not have to change, you know. Uh, and, and so at least the minimum, the, the most important part. And, and that was a blessing to see that this is a, a Bible teaching church, the love mm -hmm. God's word, which pe preachers and teachers and pastors have been preaching God's word for a long time, a congregation mm -hmm. that love God's word. So for me, mm -hmm. that was and they desired to be shepherd. And so for me, mm -hmm. that was the click. And what I understood is that to lead the congregation was to observe it at the beginning, just to be one member, become become that member that can observe. And with the elders, try to encourage them towards certain changes, if necessary, through the time. You know, but not to change the identity uh, of, of the church which is already established, but to start to learn and appreciate it and help others to appreciate what they already have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely wonderful. Are you, your background is that of a church planter, is it not, Pastor? Yes, it is. 
and, and I think I think some of the skills of planting uh, a church, uh, uh, you know, we can see the mercy and the wisdom of God in bringing someone like you to Emmanuel, because in many ways, Emmanuel had uh, suffered as every other church through COVID, through um, um, different, uh, different, uh, other, other, you know, issues that had gone on in the church. In so many ways, we had been stripped down to being almost a brand new church plant, even though we were 124 years old. Um, um, and so, so tell me what, um, uh, it, 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 yes, there was a culture at Emmanuel, but in, in so many ways, uh, so many of us were ready for, uh, something brand new, you know? Uh, something that would launch us into hopefully, unless the Lord returns, the next hundred years, um, and and setting a vision for that. Um, tell me what that uh, does in your in your heart uh, to think that that we have an opportunity now, almost ground floor at Emmanuel again, um, and and starting this, uh, especially as we think about the shepherding a uh, vision that you brought. Um, uh, and and these these other initiatives that are starting. Yes, um, I think when when I uh, when I asked the Lord uh, uh, when I was praying uh, and even with Rebecca before accepting coming to Emmanuel, um, what I what I asked the Lord was, Father, what, what I can do is what you have taught me how to do things. You know, uh, uh, I don't know any other way. You know, the way I have been, we have been planting. Uh, the churches with the vision, with the seals that we know a church should have. Um, that is the way that you have taught me. This is what I'm going to do in, in in Emmanuel Bible as 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 long as they allowed me to lead them, and, and that we can move forward towards a very clear vision of of uh, growing as a family towards maturity. A, a lot of times uh, we we can see how. Uh, we fail in be have that part of the mission of a church have clarity in that. So we we we, we uh, to become very focused in helping one another to grow in maturity. Um, I mean, deep knowledge, uh, theological knowledge, experiential knowledge of what is to walk with God and to mm. be a disciple of Christ. And at the same time, meanwhile, inviting other people to join this family. Join this family, mm -hmm. new believers, unbelievers, so we can walk together and point at them towards Christ. And also they can join us in, um, in, in growing in maturity. How? By proclaiming Christ to them, to those who are going to be joining us in the process. Mm -hmm. and, and so those two aspects for me is what I've been doing for 15 years. The Lord uh, has not been easy, neither fast or easy. Uh, but the Lord has blessed that vision. Um, I think the biblical vision of, of uh, moving forward, mobilizing the congregation towards growing in its knowledge of God's word uh, and to grow doctrinally, to grow uh, experientially uh, as a family. But at the same time, proclaiming Christ, Christ outside of our walls, inside our walls, inviting people in, reaching out people. And so mm -hmm. that that is what I am... Um, I don't think, I think that's something that Emmanuel was doing already. Uh, I think that's something that is being in Emmanuel's tradition to do. But now this is like a, a new, let's say, a, a, a new group of leaders getting together to, you know, move the, ch the church, as you said, to the, the next hundred years. Absolutely. In so many ways, uh, your arrival and your family has been like a, a, a fresh wind in our sails as a church. And uh, I think I think most most of uh, us that uh, have been part of Emmanuel for a long time would say the same. Um, we've crossed into a new year, Pastor, and uh, uh, you are uh, you've begun a new series. And I just want to touch on that a little bit. Uh, the series is uh, the God of the God of blessing, and it's uh, we're we're launching from this last week. We launched from uh, 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 Genesis one. And I just thought it was a, a, a marvelous sermon. Uh, we want to invite uh, the folks listening. If you haven't seen the sermon, if you didn't see it or you weren't in church that weekend, please go to uh, YouTube and listen and uh, and uh, and hear the sermon. 
uh, that was brought this last weekend, especially. And we're going to be in Genesis uh, camped out for a little while. Can you tell us a little bit about your your vision or the, what we're trying to convey to Emmanuel via this series? Absolutely. What what a privilege is that we are studying together. Um, I mean, in the order that we have our Bible uh, composed, uh, not chronologically, but but the first book of our Bible, the first one that we see, um, the fact that we can start in there. I mean, Genesis is 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 one of the, I think it is the book that is basic for understanding the world the way it is today, for understanding ourselves. Uh, several authors that I that I've studied have said that mainly, practically, all the doctrines, all the doctrines, it's it's beginnings of those doctrines that maybe later were better developed. They found their origins in the book of Genesis, and so. Um, uh, specifically the doctrine of uh, uh, we call it a uh, theology proper which is the study of god the father where we see his mm. attributes in the way he acts in the way he decides and one of the of the main themes in the entire book is blessing the theme of blessing it's there everywhere uh some people mm -hmm. could say that also the the theme of of the land um the theme of of relationship with god yes but but that that aspect of god that he has a tendency of goodness towards humanity towards his world his creatures and so what happened that he designed the world he designed the universe to to be a blessing for human beings and he decided mm -hmm. in a way with that specific purpose to everything that he created even the ourselves uh, to be a blessing for each other and for others and for the entire creation. But the problem is that um, sin uh, destroyed that, affected that. And so immediately in the book of Genesis, we see him establishing a plan, uh, launching a plan. We call it the redemption plan, the plan of mm -hmm. redemption, uh, where he will reestablish the blessing back again. And so, uh, uh, and that's where we see how through the lineage of Abraham, he will he will launch a promise, a promise of blessing that mm -hmm. that it was finally fulfilled uh, in the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, and uh, and so that's why we call it. I call it the God of Blessing series. It, I mean, I call the series the God of Blessing because that's practically what we see in most of the chapters. His plan mm -hmm. to reestablish uh, the blessing towards humanity. And that is accomplished through the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, Pastor, would you say that that uh, blessing isn't necessarily that God spares us from all pain? Or would you say that uh, it's better or greater than that? Mm -hmm. I think it is greater than that. Um, actually, some people will say that God's blessings is that he gives us good things. And I think it is greater than that. I mean... God's providence, uh, God's blessings are part of God's providence, which means that everything that God is gives has a disposition to give uh, towards those he created and loves. And so one of those things that he gives is suffering. And yes. why not suffering sometimes be considered as a blessing for ourselves? I mean... Mm. Um, uh, it's not about being cynic that pain is nice. No, suffering is not nice. But can suffering develop and bring God's purposes mm -hmm. that at the end its results could be a blessing for myself? Absolutely, yes. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I will say that one way God can work in our lives is through suffering. You know, and suffering mm -hmm. can bring at the end or through the suffering can accomplish God's purposes in our lives or those around us. Absolutely. There was a quote from last uh, um, this last sermon, and I'll read it so I don't uh, so I don't uh, misquote it. It's your quote. It is God has the power to change our circumstances in the same way he has the power to sustain us in our circumstances. So, Pastor, what would you say to an Emmanuel person or a congregant or a member of Emmanuel or or even just somebody maybe watching 
um, who is really, really struggling right now, really in, um, you know, maybe they have physical pain, maybe they have um, um, economic pain, family issues. What would you say um, um, Genesis has to tell us uh, or inform us about, about these conditions that we uh, have as human beings? Absolutely. Thank you for that that question because I think it is it's it's a blessing to be able to on, to to present that answer the question in a way that I can encourage our listeners. Mm-hmm. Um, immediately comes to mind that uh, story in Genesis about Agar, um, mm-hmm. Abraham's slave, when she was expelled from the camp mm-hmm. by Sarah. Uh, uh, with the permission of Abraham, and she's right there with her son in the desert, ready to die, because she took she took uh, uh, the the tour the the direction towards Egypt that it's where probably she be, she came from. Uh, that it was through the desert. I mean, that was a dead sentence, and she's right there, and and the angel of the Lord, he says the Lord. She says the Lord. I mean, mm-hmm. that is. Amazing. If, if, if that was the Lord Jesus Christ or if that is an angel of the Lord, I mean, and the way she calls him is the God that hears. Mm. God who hears. I mean, meaning to her claim, to her fears, to her sorrow. And, and so that, that is a precious figure. You know, even that's how we call God. That's one of God's names was the God who hears. And, and, um, El- Elroy, if I remember uh, well. So all that to say that, I mean, God hears our prayers. God mm. desires that we come to him in prayer when we are suffering. We have the right as his children. We, we have his desire, his commandment to bring our anxieties, our worries, our circumstances to him in prayer, in supplication. Um, and that is our right as his children. And we mm. do that. That's a profession of faith uh, where we can ask him directly, Lord, can you please spare me from this suffering? Can you please allow me to go through this suffering? But if you can take it away, please take it away. Mm. Uh, we have that right to ask him, could you please heal me? Could you please heal my loved one? Um, we can ask him, can you please return me the possibility to work if, if the situation is that we lost our work? Um mm. Can you please help me to reestablish this relationship that is broken if my suffering is because I'm having marital problems or a problem or a conflict with somebody? I mean, we can we can come and ask him for that. But then immediately we need to remember. We need to remember even the Lord Jesus teaching us how to pray. And then we ask him, Lord, but do your will. And when we say that, I remember a long time some, somebody saying, when you say that, you don't know how to pray. Absolutely not. That's the way the Lord Jesus, the Lord Jesus commanded us. Put yeah. everything under his will. And so what we're saying by that, that maybe the Lord could use the circumstances not to solve them, but to use them for his glory. And so mm. what I truly believe is that if he decides that to allow me to go and continue going through that suffering, through that lack of of a, 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 a place where to work uh if he allows me to go through the an entire conflict with another person he can use that to bless me and bless others he can use that to show himself to present himself as powerful uh it's a precious testimony a believer going through fire when he can show the world the god that he or she believes in and so other people can see their faith to stay strong like job uh, stay strong and clear. I mean, that is a precious way the Lord can work in so many ways. Uh, and yes, I will say that if he decides not to solve for now our circumstances, he he's as powerful as he is to create mountains, rivers, and lakes, and oceans. He's powerful to help us go through that situation. Mm. And that will be enrichment to all the, those who are listening that sometimes we need to see suffering and trials as a companion of life, as, as a life companion. I mean, I am, I'm, I suffer 
very, very complex migraines. That is something that the Lord mm -hmm. has not healed. So a migraine for me, something that will, will, will give me a lot of suffering during one or two days. And it could come two days later. It's, the Lord has not healed me from that. And, and uh, you know what? I think I, I just a long time ago, I decided this is a companion that I need to learn how to cope, how to live with it and still wow. live in faith by wow. faith for God's glory. And I think that is just a personal example uh, of how we should embrace suffering sometimes as a life companion and mm -hmm. give glory to him, be thankful to him that we can live for his glory and use this suffering for his glory. I appreciate that so much, Pastor. Thank you for that explanation. And, and thank you for joining us today. We uh, really um, are blessed. Uh, it's a pleasure for me uh, personally to work alongside you week after week. Uh, uh, and uh, it's been a real joy up to now. I'm really looking forward to the rest of this series. And, um, and we'll touch this uh, topic again, I'm sure, uh, in the near future. Um, I wonder, uh, Pastor, if you wouldn't mind uh, praying for uh, the listener right now, uh, a manual person perhaps, or, or someone uh, outside of a manual that's listening uh, and, uh, and asking the Lord to uh, bless them, and, uh, and then we can close. Absolutely. Thank you for this opportunity. What a blessing to be now and the next uh, weeks uh, be able to share our faith to one another. And uh, let mm. us pray. Father, thank you for being real in our lives. Thank you because we we have you, Lord. Uh, we can depend on you. And you have all the traits of your character to respond to us. Um, Father, in this afternoon, uh, knowing that both Pastor Tino, myself, and all of those who are listening to us, Lord, we are going through specific circumstances, Lord. And I want to lift up to you those circumstances, whatever they are, knowing, Lord, that you're going to manage them with justice, with out of your love, Lord, with great wisdom, Lord, with ex um, expressing all your capacity, Father, uh, out of our circumstances and, and, and situation. Lord, help us see you. Help us recognize you working in the midst of them. Lord, uh, please um, encourage us to come to you, Father, in prayer, in faith, Lord, in complete dependence uh, to see you solving them or to see you using them for whatever purpose you have behind them, Father. Increase our faith through them. Make our, please, make our, our faith become more genuine. And meanwhile, we are going through those trials, Lord, but help us never to stop believing in you. Lord, to uh, make our faith stronger and, um, and uh, for your glory, precious Father. Help us to see you in the midst of, of these trials or sufferings, Father, or circumstances, to see you present and to see you working in, in precious ways, again, for the sake of the glory of your name. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Hallelujah. I appreciate that so much. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Pastor. So thank you for watching, everyone. We are um, uh, so grateful that you joined us today. Please go to our website, www.emmanuelbible.church. We have um, in the description, you'll, you'll find our address. Feel free to visit us uh, in person. We broadcast our services every Sunday, 10 a.m. Central Standard Time in English, 12 noon in Spanish Central Standard Time. Uh, we would love to see you in person if ever you're in town or uh, if you are a regular Emmanuel uh, attender, come back this Sunday. We have a wonderful service planned and uh, it may be snowing, but you know, come on out. We're Chicagoans. We can handle a little snow. Um, and uh, also, I wanted to also share, uh, if you feel moved to uh, contribute to the ministry, we have uh, a very, very uh, handy way to give. And this is um, uh, our uh, OCR code here that you can uh, use, and it goes right to our uh, giving page uh, to support the ministry. The ministry has uh, physical needs. Obviously, we have a, a church building and uh, just many expenses, et cetera. Uh, if the Lord is putting it on your heart to uh, 
contribute to this ministry, feel free to do that. And uh, we know that there will be a great blessing for you. Well, God bless you and keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you. May he grant you peace. And we'll see you next time. God bless you and keep you. Bye-bye.